1975, when I was practicing as a barrister, I was invited to join the newly constituted Australian Law Reform Commission. So I presented myself to the Chairman, the Honourable Justice Kirby, a youthful judicial member of the Industrial Commission. Dispensing with all formality, the Chairman invited me to call him Michael, the first indication of the informal, albeit disciplined, ethos in which the proceedings of the Commission were conducted and the beginning of a long and cordial professional relationship. Another member of the Commission was John Kane, whom I knew as an Executive Member of the Law Council of Australia. And then there were three ex academic members, academic in the sense that each of them held a university appointment. Professor Alex Castles of the University of Adelaide, Mr Gareth Evans of the University of Melbourne, and Associate Professor Gordon Hawkins of the University of Sydney. We used to meet in the Commission's office in Sydney. Forty years have passed since our first meeting, and the Commission is to be congratulated on both the depth of its research and the utility of its proposals in those intervening years. There were a few novel procedural issues in those early days. The first was how to put, or what to put, on the cover of the Commission reports. The Chairman, who carried the Commission with him, favoured an attractive design featuring a stylized L. Then the Commission decided to hold public hearings, a novelty, but a useful novelty, which attracted much attention. The first controversial issue of principle which I remember related to the procedure for questioning suspects in criminal investigations. I was an adherent of the traditional rules, but Gareth Evans in particular favoured giving the police more extensive powers to question suspects in custody. Gareth's view prevailed. I was a sole dissentient. However, the most important issues arose in the reference on human tissue transplants. At that time, technology was advancing rapidly to allow the transplanting of organs and tissues from one human body to another. The expanding technology raised questions of vital interest to potential donors and recipients, scientists and medical practitioners, theologians and philosophers, health administrators and police, and of course the public generally. When would it be permissible to remove organs or tissues from the dead? What are the criteria of death? Should children below the age of 18 be allowed to donate? Should the mentally incompetent be allowed? These were and are questions of fundamental importance and the Commission appointed a broad panel of highly qualified advisers to assist in formulating the answers. The Commission defined the criteria of death to include not only the irreversible cessation of circulation of the blood, but also irreversible cessation of all brain function, including the function of the brain stem. The Commission recommended that, in the case of patients whose circulation is being maintained artificially, two doctors should have to certify that all brain function has ceased before any removal of organs or tissues could occur. Then the Commission resolved that, the, that children should be allowed to donate regenerative tissue, for example blood, subject to some procedural safeguards, but should not be allowed to donate non-regenerative tissue or organs, for example kidneys, unless the child and the child's parents give consent to a transplant to a mortally ill family member, receive independent medical advice and the approval of an ad hoc committee of three chaired by a judge who are unanimously of the opinion that the transplant is desirable, being for the benefit of the child. No donation of organs or tissues would be acceptable from persons who are mentally ill uh, and incompetent to give consent. Most of these decisions were unanimous, 
but Sir Zelman Cowan and I dissented in relation to the donation of non-regenerative organs or tissues by infant donors, believing that potential infant donors could be protected only by a blanket prohibition. Membership of the Commission was a stimulating experience and a fine legal discipline. I trust that those who followed the original members of the Commission and those who now constitute its membership have enjoyed and enjoy the camaraderie, the debates, the search for solutions and the refinement of reforms which we enjoyed. It was a formative experience and I was very fortunate to have had it.